In this video, we are going to make a round white oak dining room table. Round, as in circular, like a clock. We're also gonna put some turned legs on there. So, watch the video, enjoy yourself, and if you feel so inclined, please click that subscribe button down there somewhere to be notified of more videos like this. Okay, enjoy. White snow, red sky, reach up for so, so high. This video is proudly sponsored by IsoTunes. Check the video description below for a coupon code to get $10 off your very own pair of IsoTunes hearing protection. We're gonna start building this table from the top down. Like, literally, we're gonna do the tabletop first. So, I like to throw my boards on the chop saw, roughly cut them to the appropriate length for the overall size of my table. Now when it comes to a tabletop, milling is the most important process in the entire thing. You want to make sure that your boards are square and as flat as humanly possible. Whenever I'm milling up boards for a tabletop, the first thing I do is run each board through my joiner to get a perfect straight edge. I can use this straight edge as a guide to make the rest of my cuts. With that straight edge, I run each board through my table saw to trim them down to my desired width. This particular table will be 54 inches in circumference, so I'm using seven boards trimmed down to eight inches total to get my 54 inches. With each board the correct width, I run them back through my joiner, this time on the face of the board, to get rid of any bowing or wobbling, and give myself a nice flat surface that I can use as a reference to run each board through my planer. If you've milled your boards properly, you should be able to lay them on a work surface and have no visible seams or gaps once they're all pushed together. Believe me, if you can mill properly, your glue up will go so much smoother. And you'll also kind of feel like a badass. Another important thing to note when laying out your tabletop is to alternate your growth patterns. Smiles and frowns, people. This will keep your tabletop from bowing when you glue it all up. Now, there's a common myth in the woodworking world that when you're doing a tabletop glue up, you have to use dominoes, dowels, or biscuits to add strength to the tabletop. I might get some flack for this in the comments, but I completely disagree with this thought. Dominoes, dowels, and biscuits will simply help with your alignment of the tabletop, not really add any strength. So, if you took the time to properly mill your boards, as we did here, you can actually skip this step, just put some glue on them and slap them together. I promise your tabletop will be plenty strong. One thing I would recommend, however, is to add a clamp onto each seam of your boards to just help with alignment. This will just make sure that your boards won't slip up or down once you get all that slippery glue in there. And it's probably a good idea to go back over your top with a wet rag and just wipe off any excess glue squeeze out. Don't worry about the bottom of the table, however. We'll clean that up once it's all dry. At this point, you could stand around twiddling your thumbs waiting for your glue to dry, but you might look a bit silly. So we're gonna jump over and start working on our table legs. Now milling our legs looks very similar to milling our table top. You join, you cut, you join again, and then you run each piece through the planer. For our tabletop, as well as our table legs, we are using six quarter white oak. So each leg will be comprised of three pieces of six quarter white oak glued together. Once all your milling is done, you should have a bunch of roughly identical pieces that you can glue up into four separate blocks. Now you could glue up each block individually, but you would also be wasting a lot of time. I like to glue up all four of my legs in one giant block to cut down on the amount of time and to save on the amount of clamps that I have to fumble around with. You just have to remember not to be a silly doofus and only put glue on your four individual legs. Don't put glue in between the separate legs or you are going to glue together a giant block that you're not going to be able to get apart. Come on, use your head. Someone might look at this video and say, what an idiot. Look at all the mess he's making on his work table. But it is a work table and they're made to make a mess on. Just wipe off the extra glue with a wet rag and don't worry about the squeeze out on your giant block. 
We'll clean that all up when we mill down our legs. So after our legs are sufficiently dry, it is time to take our clamps off and the fun part is just kind of breaking them together. They shouldn't be held together too badly, just a little squeeze out on each seam, but just smash them down on your table a few times and they should pop right apart. Oh my gosh, when is this guy going to stop showing us videos of him milling things up? Well, I hate to tell you, but that's 90% of building a table. With each leg, you want to run them back through the joiner on two separate surfaces. Now, you need these two surfaces as reference points to finish your milling on the planer. Here's where you get the opportunity to add your own flair to this table. You can really mill them to any size you want. If you want big, fat, chunky legs, well, don't take too much off. And if you want skinny legs, just take a little bit more off. And finally, you want to trim each table leg down to the appropriate height. Our tabletop is one inch thick. A dining room table should be 30 inches, so we're trimming each leg to 29 inches. With all of our milling complete, you should now have four perfectly square and beautiful white oak blocks. Now you could leave it at this, just have square legs on a round table, which would be perfectly fine, and if that's what you want to do, then do it. We, however, are going to throw these onto the lathe and make them a little fancier. Enjoy. If you are going the lathe route, you just want to remember to leave a unturned block at the end of each of your leg that you can use to later attach your skirt onto. Ah, that looks pretty good. Let's see if I can do it three more times. Well, looky there, I actually did it. With our table legs done, it's time to set those aside and focus our attention back onto our tabletop. Since we're going to be cutting this tabletop into a circle, the first thing we're going to want to do is flip over our table as we'll be doing all of our cutting from the bottom and not the top. The main reason for this is that we'll be using a circle cutting jig with the router and we're going to have to put an anchor point in the center of our glued up table. We don't want that pinpoint to show on the top of our table, so if we cut it from the bottom, nobody will ever see it. I like to take a putty knife and scrape down any of the glue squeeze out that we couldn't wipe off when we initially glued it up. And then finally, I like to sand the bottom of my table thoroughly so that our router jig won't get caught up on any of those seams. Next, you're going to want to take a tape measure, measuring from both sides to find the absolute center of your glued up panel. Now, I was going to use this little rockler circle cutting jig, but darn it, it's just too small. So I had to make my own that was a little bigger. If you want to see a video on how to make your own router jig, I'll try and put one of those fancy little buttons right here to another video where I show that process. You want to make sure that once you get your jig secured into the center of your panel that it spins freely and covers the entire surface of your table. You don't want any half moon tabletops. Something else I like to do when using a router cutting jig is to attach a hook into my ceiling directly above where I'll be cutting and hang my extension cord from said hook. This just makes sure you're not tripping over the extension cord as you go round and round while cutting out your tabletop. When using a router jig to cut a circle, lots of people think that you just need to cut the entire circle with the router jig alone. Here's another area where I disagree. In my experience, the more times you go round and round with a router attached to a jig, the more likelihood that you're going to have that router slip and mess up your tabletop. So I like to go around one time, cutting about an inch to three quarters of an inch deep, and then cut off my excess wood with a jigsaw. Now, I'm not cutting close to my circle profile. I'm simply cutting off the excess wood with the jigsaw. I then take a sander and go over the entire perimeter of my table so that I have a smooth surface around the entire circumference of my top. Now what we've essentially done is turn our tabletop into its own router template. 
Using a flush cut bit with a bottom mounted bearing, you can go over the entire edge of the table and trim off all that extra wood that the jigsaw left behind. Once you've used the flush cut bit around the entire perimeter of your top, I like to go back over the whole thing very lightly with a sander just to remove any marks that the router bit might have left behind. And with that, our tabletop is essentially done. We can set it aside and start working on the skirt pieces to attach our legs together. As you might have guessed, this involves more cutting, joining, and planing to get our pieces square. But the one other thing we want to do is run each piece through the table saw, adding an eighth inch dado a half inch down from the top of our skirt. We'll use this groove to attach our tabletop with the Z fasteners that you might have seen me use in other videos. With all of our skirt pieces cut, it is time to attach them to our legs. First we gotta get this pesky circle out of the way though. To attach the skirt pieces to each legs, I am using a, wait for it, get ready to be angry, a domino joiner. That's right. Now, I get a lot of hate for using the domino joiner on all my projects, but people, I'm a professional furniture maker. So yes, it makes sense to have a domino joiner. But if I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times, you can use a frickin' doweling jig and accomplish the exact same task. I will put a link to a doweling jig in my video description. But let's be honest, stop kidding yourself. Watching me do this makes you really want a domino joiner, doesn't it? I will also put a link to a domino joiner in my video description. You might just want to get yourself one of those. With our skirt all hooked together, we can move it out of the way, let that glue dry, and take this time to finish sand our entire tabletop. I didn't like the way that these harsh corners looked on my table base, so I decided to shape them a bit and blend them into the turned legs. I did this simply by using my Festool Rotex with some 60 grit sandpaper. I was amazed at how quickly it took down the material and gave a nice rounded corner to my entire table base. I guess it just goes to show that sometimes cutting corners is actually a good thing. And then finally, I finished sanded my entire base, blending my skirt into my legs and making it nice and smooth. We have almost reached the end of this project. However, the last thing we need to do is finish both our table base and table top. Now, I've used a lot of different finishing products over the years, but the one I keep coming back to time and again is Rubio Monocoat's Cotton White, especially on white oak. In my personal opinion, it gives it the most natural looking finish out of any product I have found thus far. They're not even paying me to say that. I just, I genuinely like the product. So if you want to try it, I will also put a link in the video description below and you might get it for your next project. It's just easy. You, you wipe it on and wipe it off and call it quits. And the last thing we have to do is attach our tabletop to the base with these handy dandy Z fasteners, which I will also include a link to in the video description below. And just like that, with what seemed like hours of milling, you should have a beautiful round white oak table. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked that high quality and entertaining video. If you did, Here's another video that you might like over here. And look at that. There's another video over there that you might like as well. So maybe click on one of those and watch them. And when you're done with that, click subscribe down there and you can see more videos. Thanks. Have a great day.